Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, yes, tamu sana. Some few minutes ago, Star Digital captured a very interesting story. A story that gives us some insights into a deal between President Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Molo Odinga on Polycap Igadi. So in this video, I want us to have a look at that story after which we'll just see the details of that kind of a deal between President Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Molo Odinga. And then we are going to see whether that deal will actually succeed or backfire. Whether that deal will enable Polycap Igadi to win Nairobi gubernatorial seat. Azimio MPs MCS suspends their campaigns for a month to sell Igadi in the city. Inside Uhuru Raila mega plan to market Igadi in Nairobi. If you go through that story as captured by the star, we are being told that Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Mulu Odinga on Tuesday met at State House Nairobi and they agreed on Rail on Polycap Igade being Azimio gubernatorial candidate for Nairobi. That is one thing the, the star is trying to bring a story like that. And then secondly, we are being told that Azimio MPs and MCs, I believe specifically from Nairobi, have been commissioned to suspend their campaigns for one month to campaign for Polycap Igade in the city. And then also we are being told from that story that Tim Wanyoni, the candidate who was to contest through ODM party for Nairobi gubernatorial seat, will now go for the senatorial seat. And then Edwin Sifuna, who was to contest for Nairobi senatorial seat through ODM, will now go for Westlands constituency. That is the story as captured by the star. So whether the story is actually true or not, is only time that will tell. But from where I sit, I honestly believe that if that is the lineup, then it's not all that a bad lineup for Azimio. Because now assuming that ODM fronts Wanyonyi and then you believe fronts Igadi, I'm clearly seeing a split in the votes on the side of Azimio. And that in one way or the other, can earn their rival competitors an easy ride in the city. But if Azimio, as a political coalition, can field one candidate for gubernatorial seat, senatorial seat, then I'm seeing Azimio most likely, if they play their cards very well, they might just end up sweeping all those top positions in the city. And then also we are being told that Polycap Igade is to be deputized by Philip Kaloki, a WIPA member. And that is also so because of the ethnic kind of arithmetic. If actually Igade, through Philip Kaloki, I'm seeing WIPA votes being lured to that kind of a ticket. So in this video, I just want us to have a discussion to see clearly whether that's, that deal can actually earn Igadi, Nairobi gubernatorial seat, or whether it will backfire. In case you've bumped here for the very first time, kindly sub, kindly subscribe, give this video a like. Yes. In our yesterday's analysis on the same topic, I did indicate that there are two factors working to the advantage of Polycap Igadi. And the first factor Polycap Igade is contesting through the most dominant political coalition in the city. That's Azimio One Kenya Alliance. That's one advantage that can just make Polycap Igade win Nairobi gubernatorial seat. And I'm saying that because if you look at Azimio 
and then you look at Uda, it's a given fact that Azimio is the dominant political outfit in the city. And that is so because even without Uhuru Kenyatta teaming up with Raila Molo Udinga, in all the previous elections that have been done in the city, Raila has always been winning the city vote. Raila won in 2013 without Musalia Mudawadi. Raila won the city vote in 2007 without Kalonzo Musioka. And Raila also won in 2017 with both Kalonzo and Musalia Mudawadi. So Raila without Kalonzo, without Mudawadi, always wins the city vote. And also without Uhuru Kenyatta. But now we are seeing Kalonzo, Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Mulu Odinga now combining efforts in the city. That only means that Raila's vote in the city can only increase. And that is the kind of advantage actually Polycap Igade has. In fact, that is a head start for Polycap Igade. And it's a head start because I know as of now, some Azimio supporters might be complaining as a result of that. But you know, three months to the election is a very long period of time. By August elections, the, the Azimio supporters complaining might have, by August, I know a good majority shall have forgotten about their complaints now. When they go to the ballot on, on the 9th of August, I'm seeing a good majority of them voting along <laughs> party and coalition affiliation. And that's how Polycap Igade will just have a head start. And then if you look at Johnson Sakaja, Sakaja is contesting through not a very popular party in the city. Yes, not a very popular party in the city. And then if you consider the supporters of Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance, a good majority of them are residents from the mountain. And as I talk right now, residents of the mountain, I know, they are split. And now with the fact that Igade actually comes from the mountain, is also going to complicate matters for Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance. Most definitely, we are going to see a good number of residents of the mountain splitting their votes between Sakaja and Igade. And now they'll just be topping up to the traditional support basis of Raila Molo Odinga. That's an analysis we did in details in our yesterday's video. And then the second factor, if you look at all these candidates who have so far declared their interest to contest for Nairobi gubernatorial seat, there is no clear favorite amongst all of them. And I'm saying that based on the previous opinion polls that have been done. Some are indicating Wanyonyi was on the lead. Some are indicating Gatia, Sam Sakaja. That only shows that there is no preferred, popular, or favored candidate to win Nairobi gubernatorial seat. And I'm saying that because if you compare that to what we saw with the case of Sonko, Sonko, when he was contesting as a senator and as a governor, he was largely being seen as a clear favorite. And that could have actually made it very hard for any candidate just to be imposed to, in Nairobi to actually beat Sonko. But in the case of 2022, gubernatorial race in the city, there is no candidate coming out as a clear favorite. And all these candidates, their political survival likely depends on the political outfits they are aligning themselves to. Yes. That is, their political survival largely depends on that, but not really on their strength. And also Sakaja's, not Sakaja, Igade's main competitor, if at all, it's true he is, there is a male candidate, then his main competitor most likely will be Johnson Sakaja. And also if you look at Johnson Sakaja's performance, for the time he has been the senator in the city, his performance has actually been wanting. There is nothing tangible or there is no very serious development maybe Sakaja actually initiated for the time he served as Nairobi senator. So in terms of development or other performance, 
Sir Kaji has no very strong credentials that can endear him to residents of Nairobi. And also if you look at uh, Mike Bovi Sonko, Mike Sonko came through some kind of populist politics. But in terms of delivery, Mike Sonko actually failed miserably as a Nairobi governor. And if you look at Sakaja, and then you look at Igade, Igade reminds Nairobians of the work Mbadi did through NMS in the city. In fact, Mbadi is widely celebrated to have done at least some good job in the city compared to Mike Bovisonko. So Igade is being seen as another Mbadi, while Sakaja is being seen as another typical Kenyan politician in the make of Sonko, who comes with some kind of populist kind of politics, but they don't deliver anything. So also on that basis, I'm seeing Igade actually getting some traction from Nairobi residents. So I honestly believe that if at all that is the lineup, then most definitely Polycap Igade might be just the next governor after an Kananu, I'm seeing that kind of a possibility. Otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, just as I did indicate when we were starting, in case you've bumped here for the very first time, kindly subscribe, give this video a like. Thank you, God bless you, God bless Kenya.